In my last video, I covered Dijkstra's algorithm, which grabs you the best path between any two nodes in the graph decently quickly. But vanilla Dijkstra's is kinda jank, in a way. Like, for example, if we want to go from LA to Canada, we're pretty sure the fastest way goes mostly north. But if you look at how Dijkstra's runs, it kinda just looks in all directions until it stumbles upon the exit. Not great. Uh, when I was drawing this, it reminded me of my path through college, which is how you know there's a better way. Okay, so how do we find the best path faster? One idea is to transform our input, and this is an idea that comes up really a lot in math. Uh, even if we know how to go about solving a problem, it's often just a good idea to try turning it into something else that gives us the same answer, but faster, and just solving that problem instead. In real life, we humans just automatically do this, with these brain tricks called heuristics, which is really just a fancy way of saying a fast guess. Uh, if you see a lion in the wild, you're not going to sit there and calculate like, hmm, what action bestows the highest expected value? Yeah, no, you're just going to run because it's like scary. And that's probably the right thing to do. How does this idea apply to our problem? So let's just say we have a graph. We want the lowest cost path between nodes A and C. If we run Dijkstra's, we will get the best path slowly. But if there's a way to make fast guesses on how far away we think nodes will be from the end, we can slightly tweak our edge costs to nudge it into going the right way. This whole process is called a star search, and it may not seem like much, but it works really well. Usually with heuristics in real life, you're losing some accuracy in exchange for speed. But in A-star, it's often very easy for us to pick a heuristic that both speeds things up on average and guarantees the right answer. How do we do this? To start, let's think about speed first. Here's where our good old human intuitions come in. If I gave you this problem, find the shortest path, which way would you look first? I mean, probably north, cause duh. And in practice, you'd usually be right. So let's just have your computer do the same thing. Uh, one, guess how far each node is from the end. And two, if an edge is going from a low heuristic node to a high heuristic node, uh, that's bad, we're getting further, stop going there. Otherwise, if we're going from a higher to lower heuristic node, then we're getting closer to the end. That's really good, that's promising. Okay, so how do we encourage Dijkstra's to go in these directions? How do we encode our intuition into something algorithmic? Remember Dijkstra's likes low edge costs. For each node pair, let's just subtract the heuristic for where we are from the heuristic for where we're going, and add it to the edge cost, just straight up. If we're going closer, we add something negative, edge cost goes down, that's great. If we're going farther, we add something positive, edge cost goes up, Dijkstra's is probably avoiding that for a while. So clearly we're nudging Dijkstra's towards the end, so it'll find a path there faster. But when it does, will it still find the same best path as if we didn't do all of this crap to the edge weights? And it turns out, yes it will, as long as our heuristic follows these two rules. First, it doesn't have negative edge weights. As we know, that would just break Dijkstra's. Uh, yeah. Making sure that doesn't happen for any edge may seem kind of tricky, but as we'll see in a bit, it's actually not too hard. Second, a heuristic for the end node must be zero. That's just like common sense. Like if I ask my computer to guess how far away my house is from itself, the answer really shouldn't be like seven. Together, these two rules ensure that Dijkstra's always gives us the same best path as if we ran it on the old graph. Uh, the exact reason why is a little complicated, I'm still going to explain it, but if you don't want to hear it, feel free to skip this part. Okay, so firstly, what's super important is that this rule forces our heuristic to be always optimistic. This means that for any of our nodes, our heuristic for it can't be any higher than the real future cost of any path to the end starting from there. Let's look at nodes one step from the end. Our heuristic has to be optimistic there, cause if it wasn't, we'd have a negative edge, that's heresy. Okay, so let's look at two steps from the end. Well, we know that the heuristic for the node after this one has to be optimistic, we just proved that. 
So the only way again to not have a negative edge is if our current heuristic is optimistic as well. And you can keep on extending this logic forever until you hit every single node, so everything is optimistic. Hooray! Now why do we care about this? So again, this makes sure that Dijkstra's will always give us the right path, because let's just say we're about to return some crappy path, we're at the final stage. If we compare the new cost of our crappy path with the old cost of the crappy path, we see that they're the same, besides just the heuristic for the start node, since all other heuristics cancel out. Now let's look at the fastest path, the one we really just want to pick. Again, the new and old one have the same cost, besides the constant start node. So the best path still has to have the lowest cost. And because our heuristic is always optimistic, every stage of the actual fastest path must still have a lower cost than this bad path, in the new graph too. Since Dijkstra's keeps going down the lowest cost path it sees, we explore the entire best path before we finish any of the bad ones. So what is an example of a good heuristic? One that works really well for travel problems is just normal Euclidean distance to the end. Uh, it obeys rule number one because of how triangles work. These two sides combined could never be shorter than that one, or you just broke geometry. And it very obviously obeys rule number two. Awesome. So now you're pretty good at quickly going through graphs. You can go out there and build some really cool stuff like, uh, Google Maps, or at least like a jank version of it. But even beyond all this, I think learning Dijkstra's in A-Star come with some underrated life lessons as well. First, if you have a system that works, but it feels just really intuitively wrong, there's probably a way to make it better. It took some really smart people almost a decade after Dijkstra's came out to actually invent A-Star. So if you see something going around your life that seems kind of dumb, but you can probably still make a difference. And second, Dijkstra's algorithm is what we call a greedy algorithm. In other words, it shows us that sometimes the very best thing we can do is not really worry about the world or the far future, and really just chill out and do the easiest thing right in front of us. Anyways, I hope this tutorial helped. Let me know in the comments if there's another topic I should cover, and as always, have an awesome day, don't be a stranger!